Eye contact, I find, is one of those things that the more you learn it, the more confused you get. There's so much different advice online on how to go about it, and there's so many hard rules, that in this week's episode of Master Talk, I'm going to be explaining eye contact in a way that appeals to any type of speaker and any type of situation. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brendan, and I'm the host of Master Talk, your go-to channel to mastering your talk. And today we'll be talking about eye contact through three key questions as we usually go about it. First question will be, why is eye contact so important to your audience? The second one is, why are so many people confused about it? I surely was at the beginning. The third question is, of course, my framework to mastering your eye contact. So let's start with question number one. Why is eye contact so important? And I like to use an analogy to explain this. You know, whenever I explain public speaking in general to, to students or to different people at large, I always like comparing public speaking to having a one-on-one -on -one coffee with someone. So let's pretend that you're having a coffee with your significant other, boyfriend, girlfriend, friend, really anyone, and there's no phones, there's no distractions, you're really just focused on being present for one another. So let's take that same example, let's pretend we're having a coffee together. As you can see from this live example I'm talking to and I'm really excited, you feel a small angst in your stomach because I'm not looking at you directly in that, those last few seconds. And similarly, when I think about public speaking, at large audiences, you know, 20, 25, even 25,000 people, it's really about having coffee with 25, 250. 25,000 people at once. So what I'm trying to say here is let's say a room is separated into three key areas, but you're only presenting in this area. That basically means that you're not being present for everyone else in the room. So ultimately what I'm saying here is the reason why eye contact is so important is because it allows you to engage with every single person in the room so that everyone walks away from it, understanding your idea and feeling connected with you as a speaker. Similar to having a coffee with someone, if you're not paying attention to them and you're not looking at them directly, they feel a bit weird. You know, they want to get back on their phone, they won't be paying too much attention, and they'll be wondering why you're not looking at them directly as you're speaking to them, right? Simple as that. Second question, which is going to be a bit more complicated, and that's why is eye contact so confusing for everyone? And the main reason is because there's so many different ways and suggestions and recommendations on how you should go about eye contact. Some people say that you need to make sure that you've talked, you've looked at every single person in the room at least once in a presentation. Someone else would say you need to look at one point only in the whole pitch and you're only supposed to look at that one point. You know, and there's so many different ways of going about it. There's so many different suggestions like that that Basically what I'm saying is there's no size one that fits all, right? Because some people say one thing, some people say another. And another thing I find really confuse, confusing about eye contact is it really depends on the size of the audience, but also the classroom that you're in or the venue. So let's say, for example, you're in a small boardroom with 10, 15 people. It's much easier for you to apply the look at everyone at least once rule to every single person in the room. But if you're talking to 10,000 people or even 1,000 people in a big auditorium, let alone 100, it's very difficult for you to look at everyone in the eye at least once, right? And then the other question goes, what if the classroom is divided up in one section like this? Do you just present at large? Do you just present to the left? Do you just present to the right? Do you switch around? And the same thing goes around for 180 amphitheaters. Let's say you're presenting like this and you have students at large like this. So do you present to the left, the center, or the right? Like as you can see there's a lot more complicated elements to, to public speaking that meets the eye. You know what I mean? So this is where things get interesting, right? And another thing that I find finally is that Depending on what your goal is as a public speaker, maybe you want to pay more attention to specific people in the presentation. Here's an example. Let's say you're pitching to a boardroom, right? And you're trying to sell them your services or your consulting fees or some sort of marketing strategy that you have that you want to sell to this client. And there's 20 people in the room. 
But at the end of the day, let's say the CEO or the VP of marketing, like the vice president of marketing, makes the final decision. Even if there's 20 people in the room, shouldn't you want to be focusing your eye contact on the CEO and the VP of marketing? So all of these elements that I'll recap here for you, one, the different ways and different techniques that are being taught to you, two, how the classroom size varies and who you should be prioritizing, and three, the number of people in your actual audience makes eye contact very different and very dependent on each situation, each presentation room you're in, right? So now you're probably wondering, okay, Brendan, so what's your trick to mastering this, right? And I'll be honest when I say there's no hard rule to mastering eye contact, but I do have a simple framework that you can follow that I'll be applying in two different examples, okay? And that's question three, my simple framework to mastering your eye contact. So let's get into it. So the first rule that I abide by is no matter what situation you're in, no matter what presentation you're in, you always want to keep your eye contact either with the audience, doesn't matter where you're looking at them, or your slides. Slides could also be live props or different things that you're using, but you never deviate from either of those two scenarios. So the best example I like to give with eye contact is when people are, when someone is talking to you, but as they're communicating their ideas to you, they look away from the audience. So here's an example that I'll give right now. So let's say I'm talking about a topic that's really important to me and I forget what I'm saying, so I'm just gonna look on top and it's really confusing and you get my point. Like the point is you want to make sure that your eye contact is either on the audience that you're talking to or on slides, right? So you either wanna do this, here's my slide, here's the audience, here's my slide, here's the audience but you never want to deviate your eye contact like what I'm doing right here. Does that make sense? So rule number one is never deviate from your audience or your slides, okay? So the next thing that I want to be tackling for number two is prioritize to maximize, okay? So it's very important for you to keep in mind what is the goal of your presentation at the end of the day? What are you trying to achieve out of it, right? So let's say in the example that I gave before, if you're talking to 20 different people, but in the audience, you wanna be focusing on either the CEO or the VP of marketing, you need to make sure that you're balancing your eye contact in a way that prioritizes those individuals, which obviously will require a lot of practice, but I'll go into an example that explains this, all right? So it always depends. But let's say you're giving like uh, a TED talk, right, to a thousand people. Then at that point, there's no differences in decision making or who's more important than another in a presentation. So you wanna spend equally as much time with everyone in the audience. Which brings me to my third and final point about eye contact, which is no matter what, you need to make sure that you've spoken to every single group in the presentation, even if you haven't looked at everyone individually. So let's say you're, and I don't want you to stress about that by the way, you don't, there's no hard rule. You don't need to spend so much time focusing on looking at every single person individually. I think that's a very difficult thing for beginners to do and only that should only be reserved for advanced public speakers. I'm just letting that out there. So basically what I'm trying to say is, let's say your classroom's divided up into three key segments. You need to make sure at some point in your presentation that you've pivoted at least once to all of them. So what I like to do in that situation, I go in the center, then I talk to this side, then I talk to this side, then I talk to this side. So left, center, right or you could do right, left, center. What I'm trying to say here basically is there's not really a hard rule. You just need to make sure that you've addressed each one. Just do it in a way that's more comfortable with you. And of course, if you want to practice at the beginning by just staring at one point um, in your audience, that's also fine. I'm just saying that like as you get better and as you uh, start mastering eye contact, you want to start deviating your eye contact throughout the entire audience. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'll conclude this video by looking at two different examples that will help you kind of look at eye contact in different contexts, okay? So let's take the first example with a 10 to 15 person room where you're pitching to the CEO, you're selling your services, you're trying to get them to buy your marketing strategy or platform. In that situation, let's say I had 25 slides to present, I had a good 30, 35 minutes, in that situation, I want to make sure that through each of those slides, so there's 15 people with 25 slides, that in at least each one, I've looked at each person in the room at least once. So slide number one, I need to address one person. Slide number two, I need to address the other. 
Slide number three, I need to dress the other, etc., etc. So I'm going to strategically weave the way that I look at people in my audience based on the number of slides that I have if the audience is small. But of course, we should never forget prioritize to maximize, right? Because the CEO and the VP of marketing is in the room. So in those situations, for the other 10 slides that I have, I'm going to I'm going to look into which slides are the most important for a CEO and a VP, what are the most important takeaways, and I'm going to make sure in those takeaways that I'm addressing the CEO and the VP of marketing specifically. Does that make sense? So in this case, eye contact is being used as a way to look at every single person in the room to get all of their attention, but at the same time, prioritizing the CEO and the VP of marketing to say, hey, I know you guys are the key decision makers in this presentation, and I wanna make sure that I'm tailoring my pitch to you guys, because that's my goal as a presenter, to win your business and your clients. Does that make sense, cool? Second example, classroom setting, right? A lot of students are watching this, so let's use that as an example. So let's say, let's give it, let's make it really simple and we're just gonna use a square classroom. So let's say you're standing here, I'm the presenter here, and everyone here is the audience in your general square classroom. So what I like to do in those situations is I like standing, let's say the, the teacher's desk is here and I'm here in the center. In that situation, what I'll do is I'll stand at the center, I'll give my introduction, and then as I move through the points in my presentation, I'll slowly deviate into three key areas. So first I'll focus on the left side of the classroom. I'll say, okay, this is point number one on this slide and we're gonna be talking about this. Then in the next point, depending on how I vary it, I'm gonna go into the next group. So now I'm gonna talk about point number two and how important it is for your business or the Renaissance or whatever topic you like. And in that situation, I'm focusing a lot on group number two. So that's why I'm, alter I'm either alternating because a lot of this is instinct. I don't really think about it, but when I started doing it, I did think about it. So let's say I would say group one, group two, group one, group two. And when there would be really, really important slides, then I would slowly shift my focus to the teacher sitting on the desk over here. Or if she's sitting over in the audience, I would just do one, two, one, two. And I would stare at the teacher um, momentarily sometimes because she's the one who's giving my grade, right? Prioritize to maximize, don't forget. So essentially, to slow things down, to keep things simple, I would alternate between groups one and two, one and two, and I would look at the teacher probably 20, 30 percent of the time around, because she's the one who's ultimately deciding my grade. I hope this all makes sense. I know Matt, I just, I know I made eye contact a lot more confusing than it would be, but I hope I explain it in a way that you're able to master it, understand it, and slowly weave in eye contact in a way that works for you. Right? At the end of the day, I want to emphasize there's no hard rule here. You just need to remember those three key rules that I gave at the beginning and focus on mastering your talk. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. My name is Brendan. I'm the host of Master Talk. And I hope through with this channel, with this information, that you're one step closer to mastering your talk. Take care, everyone, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. See you guys next week.